Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at top 10 teams around to buff Pokemon for the Open Ultra League. Are you going to play the Open Ultra League for the next week? It's going to be only available, I think, it's actually going to be available, I think, for two weeks, which is kind of interesting. As well as we're going to have available the Retro Cup. So let me know in the comment section what you're more interested in, the Retro Cup or the Ultra League. For the Retro Cup, I already made a video about the top teams there, so definitely check that one out. For, I think, not even for buff Pokemon, just in general. Otherwise, of course, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. If you don't want to, you don't have to, of course. But if you enjoy the content, would appreciate it. Next up, we're going to take a look at the meta. The meta is going to be kind of similar, but we're going to see some Pokemon being a little bit buffed and a little bit um, nerfed as well. I might make a video about buffed and nerfed Pokemon for the Ultra League as well. If you want to see it, let me know in the comment section. But um, here, for example, one of the bigger buffs is Poliwrath. One of the more hidden buffs is Giratina. I think Giratina was like at around like 8 or something. Now it's at 2. Thing is for Giratina, um, the Steelix is gone. And the Steelix nerf actually going to shift quite a bit for the Ultra League, which is kind of interesting. For example, Pokemon like Pidgeot is going to be a little bit more common. And also something like Mandibus, as you can see here. So Flying type is going to be a little bit better, which you're going to see as well for the teams with like yeah new pokemon coming up first one talonflame talonflame flying type pokemon going to be very strong in this meta and there's also going to be a video tomorrow towards the talonflame in the ultra league so definitely stay tuned for that one but we're going to have a team here with the shadow swampert in the lead we're going to have the wheezing as a say swap and the talonflame in the back with the new move fly plus the incinerate being buffed this pokemon is a lot of fun in this meta you can also use charizard if you want to have a little bit of a cheaper option but um, we are going to be a little bit more neutral against some Pokemon that Charizard might be a little bit weak to. Thing is here, Swampert would be definitely way more preferred over the Tapu Fini. But Tapu Fini itself might be a little bit of an issue for the team then as well. If you, for example, go for Charizard over Weezing. It's a little bit tricky, but we're going to see some um, other options as well. So here, as you can see, um, this team looks definitely very solid on paper. Pitchard can be a little bit of an issue, but actually all Pokemon are kind of neutral against it. And this team looks definitely like a solid one. And yeah, it should be very decent. Moving on. Next team going to be around Skeledurge here. Skeldurge also got benefited by the Incinerate buff, actually gaining quite a lot of um, yeah, rating during this kind of period. So this is going to be a very interesting Pokemon for the Ultra League coming up here. You're going to have the Skeldurge with the Greedon as well as the Pidgeot in the back. You could also use something like this Staraptor as your say sub over the Greedon, but that like, Greedon was, would most likely be a little bit better. But if we can take a look here, we're going to see as well why Pidgeot is so strong. Like Pidgeot is literally amazing. Like this Pokemon just destroys everything. It is wild, only like Reggie Steel from the top meta is going to be able to survive against the Pidgeot, which is just mad. So, like, Pidgeot literally benefited so much from CX being gone and, like, some other Pokemon being gone that are especially... Like, for example, the Fire-type buff really got rid of a lot of Steel-type Pokemon, which was a little bit sad for this one. So, yeah, definitely Pidgeot is one of the strongest Pokemon, if not the strongest Pokemon for the Ultra League now. Moving on to the next one, we're going to have here the Skarmory. Skarmory is actually a cool Pokemon. Skarmory is going to be um, an XL Pokemon as well, of course. You need to have it fully XL. We're going to have Steel Wing, Brave Bird, as well as the Sky Attack here. We have the Giratina. For Giratina, I most likely would recommend in the current meta to run Ancient Power over the Shadow Sneak again. Um, I expect to see a little bit less Steel type Pokemon just because Fire types got buffed mainly. And um, because Fire types got buffed, Ancient Power going to be super effective against them. So I feel like this would be the best play, of course going to make you a little bit weak against other steel type pokemon if you're going to encounter them here swampert would most likely be the best pokemon for those in the bag also for skarmory steel wing is going to be neutral against something like an alone sand slash so it's not even going to be that bad for this one as well here pokemon that could beat this team Mandibus is neutral for the skarmory plus also swampert has a ton of damage plus you have ancient power on the giratina reggie steel can be a little bit tricky for sure if you don't want shadow sneak but the rest should be really really fine here there's honestly nothing that really kind of hard wards this team. Just a very neutral team in general, I feel like. So let's move on to the next team coming up. Next team going to be around Poliwrath. And here's a team that actually was already viable last season. So I kind of would recommend you to try it out as well. We're going to have here Drapion and Skunk Tank. Both can be either Shadow or Non-Shadow as a say so such in the back as well. Which um, here we can see it's not as great on paper, but this team is actually really solid. And I know that a lot of people had some success with this team. Other alternative wise, you can also use something like the Regisir, say stop or the Cresselia on the back. Um, basically, it would work out pretty well as well. I would imagine that we're going to encounter a few more Tentacruel though, which might be a little bit tricky for 
Um, at least, like, yeah, maybe the, I mean, the poison types are kind of fine here as well, because they're poison dark, and you still have coverage of, like, crunch on both of them, but, um, Tentacool will, will be a little bit tricky for the Polyrath, as Polyrath is going to only have resisted damage against Tentacool, which is also one of the main reasons why this Pokemon most likely going to be fairly common. Speaking of Tentacool, here we're going to have an alternative team for this Pokemon. We're going to have the Tentacool in the lead. We're going to have the Giratina as our say stop again with Ancient Power. It's most likely the way to go because Tentacool is going to be good against something like the Talonflame, which I would imagine going to be quite common for this upcoming week or like the two weeks there. And so if you're going to swap out into your Giratina, you're most likely going to get out something like a Talonflame or like a Charizard, which is going to be fairly neutral still usually. But with Ancient Power, this matchup is going to be way more in your favor. Again, you're going to have a Sace up here that would be a little bit tricky for potential steel type Pokemon. So like if you want to go for Shadow Sneak to be a little bit safe against potential steel type Pokemon because your lead kind of sucks against those. Um, it most likely would be a little bit better for you to go for Shadow Sneak, but I still feel like Ancient Power is the right way to go. Ruizine in the back is most likely the best Pokemon that you can use. Tentacool has Blizzard for also flying type Pokemon. You're gonna get out potential flying and normal type Pokemon with Giratina as well, why, why also the Ancient Power is so kind of nice for this Pokemon here. So I feel like this is a very solid line and I would recommend you to try this one out. Team number six, we're going to have a team here with Staraptor where you can but also just substitute it for the Pidgeot. Pidgeot is going to be a little bit of a better Staraptor, but it is going to be fine. Staraptor having access to Fly plus Close Combat is going to be cool. And as you can see here, this team looks really, really solid on paper as well. Again, there's nothing that really going to hardball you too much here. Um, I would like to have the Tabofini a little bit more as a say up for this team. But with Tabofini, you're going to have a double weakness to electric type Pokemon, which might not be ideal for you. So um, you might want to stick maybe with the uh, Cobalion, but it really depends on what you're going to encounter. If, if you're going to encounter a lot of electric types, it might not be ideal for you, but otherwise this should be the way to go. Moving on to team number 7, we're going to have Toxic Rogue here. And Toxic Rogue is, in this case, in the back, I feel like this is a solid spot for it. We're going to have the Seisop of the Surfetch, going to have access with Night Slash as well, for like potential ghost type Pokemon, like having some cover coverage for this. I feel like Surfetch is a very good Pokemon in the current meta, especially for the Great League as well, which I might take a look at as well soon, soon as least. But um, here we're going to have the Skarmory in the lead again. You could go for Registeel in the lead, you could go for any kind of Steel type in the lead, you could go for... Pidgeot in the lead if you want to go for Pidgeot, you can go for any kind of flying type in the lead, like there are a lot of different options, but here, as you can see, going to be a solid lineup there as well as Garmy, should still be able to actually do a lot of damage against Mind of Us as well, I feel like it's kind of dependent on which um, shield scenario you take a look at, but um, all of those matchups are looking really fine, again, if you would go for Pidgeot, Pidgeot only really loses against Regis here in the current meta, then um, you're going to be able to beat Regis still with both of your flying type Pokemon in the back, so it's going to be one of the strongest teams as well. But I feel like the Surf Edge coverage is going to be very cool in the meta because if you go through it, basically, against Reggie Steel, you have Counter against Giratina, you have Night Search against Polyrath, you have Leaf Blade against um, the Cressalia, you have Night Search against Mandibus. It's a little bit tricky against Ruizian. You would have theoretically Brave Bird, which would be an option as well for you to run, so it's not even as safe for them as well. So you kind of see already there are a lot of Pokemon that are kind of weak to Surf Edge. A very cool save up in the current meta, kind of underrated, but I feel like it has a lot of potential. Moving on to team number 8, I kind of want to make a team around Hisui and Everluck. Hisui and Everluck got access to the move Icy Wind. And so we're going to try out here a team which is going to have the Tremlin in the lead and the Hisui and Everluck as a Seisop and the Auroras in the back. This team looks honestly like so good on paper, basically hard walls everything that Trevenant doesn't want to face with your backline, which is kind of wild, like Mandibus getting hard walled, Pidgeot getting hard walled, any kind of flight type getting hard walled, Gustard completely getting destroyed, Talonflame completely getting destroyed, like literally looks so so good. Jellison seems like the only option that is going to be a little bit tricky for you, but still you're going to do super effective damage with both Shadow Claw as well as Seed Bomb or Shadow Ball against the Jellison in the lead, so it's not going to be as bad either. And I feel like having the Asui and Avalak as the say up here going to allow you to get some kind of advantage by just debuffing the opponent and then sweeping endgame with the Aurora seems to be like a great play in general. So I'm curious about this one. I kind of want to try this out as well, but let's move on to the next one. Next one coming up, we're going to have Suicune here. Suicune is, of course, buffed with the move Scald. And we're going to have a team with the Giratina in the lead and the Taboo Finny as your Seisop. Looks okay. Looks pretty solid as well. Again, it's going to be a little bit tricky against Pokemon like the, um, yeah, against something like the Pidgeot, for example, or like the Staraptor. But other than this, those Pokemon are going to be very fine for this kind of scenario. You can't argue again for going for Ancient Power for just the Pidgeot matchup, which would make a little bit of sense, I would say. 
Um, but you can also kind of go for Shadow Sneak for the Tapu Fini matchup, which might be also a little bit tricky otherwise, because Tapu Fini is actually okay for the Giratina if you just go for Shadow Sneak and do some damage with that, because Shadow Claw is not going to be resisted, and you resist the fast move of the opponent, so it's not as bad. So maybe I would stick with this current moveset here on the screen with Shadow Sneak because of the yeah, Tapu Fini matchup, but otherwise this team looks really solid. And again, if you don't want to have Suicune in the back, Rachi Seal is the better option for this one, but yeah, Suicune is okay in the meta, not the greatest, but it is definitely playable now. Final team, I kind of want to take a look at the team around Oranguru, and so here you see of course Mewtwo with the Mewtwo, I think, is it X? I think it's Mewtwo X. Um, there on the screen, of course, Armored Mewtwo is meant with this. I don't have a uh, moving animation for Armored Mewtwo because it's a Pokemon Go thing. But um, here, basically, Armored Mewtwo has some play in the current meta, I feel like. Especially with like Pokemon like the Poliwrath being a little bit more common, like the Verizian. Going to have coverage against Steel-type Pokemon. This is the main reason why I would want to use a safe swap here. Because you're going to be able to have the Poirath in the lead, kind of scaring those Steel-type Pokemon, having Armored Mewtwo as a safe swap, also Poirath scares the Dark-type Pokemon, having Armored Mewtwo as a safe swap, which is going to have Side Strike as well as the Dynamic Punch going to be nice, and then you're going to have Oranguru, which only is going to be weak against Dark-type Pokemon really, and like Bug-type Pokemon theoretically, but um, this is going to be kind of free at the end, and as with Trailblaze you can just kind of build up your damage output with Confusion later on, so I feel like this would be a cool team as well. But we have to see. I hope you enjoyed this video though. If you did, feel free to leave a like and uh, check out the video on the screen and I'll see you then. Bye bye.